Hey guys, and welcome to day six of Chris Chan Week. Who knew that thinking of stuff with Chris, you know, for, for this week was actually hard? Um, but I thought we'd look at some of the times that he was in the news. Uh, this one we already saw the other night when we watched Chris, uh, some videos. But, um, these also are videos, but they're when he's been in the news. Um, the latest one of him being talked about by Tucker Carlson of all people. Uh, so we're gonna go through and watch some of these and it's only like four videos, but just the fact that Chris has been in the news four fucking times. Um, most, most, I mean, uh, this one, it wasn't bad. And then the two other ones wasn't bad. It was just a Tucker Carlson one where they were like, oh yeah, he had sex with his mom. Um, but let's, uh, I really should do, you used to do that more flirtingly. Um, no, <laughs> let's actually go from the beginning. Uh, yeah, from the youngest. And Poké News. Okay. So we've got a timeline going. So this is the earliest point that I know of when he got the, um, the Sega Sonic contest um, that he entered. And I think he was like, gave, they gave him a certain amount of uh, money he could spend on like Sega games and stuff like that. Or just games in general. But um, yeah, here you go. Including what Sonic the Hedgehog means to a very special Charlottesville boy. And the significance goes way beyond a high score in videos. Finally tonight, Sonic the Hedgehog is running wildly in the Chandler household this weekend. 12-year-old Christian Chandler of Charlottesville was the winner in a video game shopping spree. Christian is one of only about 100 winners nationally to receive $1,000 worth of Sega games and equipment. For his parents, it's just another example of how well he's doing. Christian is a high-functioning autistic child. This past fall, on his own initiative, he entered a contest based on a favorite cartoon character. What you had to do was exactly watch Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon and I'd listen to what Sonic says at the end of it and write it down for a whole week and then I had to mail it in and I has to be drawn out of a hat and I just won. And Christian's father says it only takes a few hours for him to master an electronic game and then move on to another. I can't master any of them. That's it for now and it's just coming up on the NBA basketball game at 5.30. It's not 6.30, it's 5.30. We'll see you back here at 11. Thanks for watching. $1,000 worth of Sega video games and equipment. That's a lot of money, especially back then. Um, although back then, Sega, I mean, really didn't have a whole lot of equipment back then, so I mean... But yeah, he entered this contest, and um, he, he entered, and he won. As you heard him say, he they drew his name from a hat, apparently. And um, I'm sorry, I just can't stop staring at these. Here, let me uh, freaking Cadbury cream eggs, delicious. But a uh, thousand dollars, Jesus, fuck. you know, the games back then weren't, I don't remember if they were nearly expensive as they are now. I mean, I remember Pokemon was what. $30 when it came out. Nowadays, you're spending upwards to some games, like if you want the DLC beforehand or a pre-purchase or whatever, you're spending, what, $60, $70, $80? And then that's only if you have enough space on your freaking hardware. Because everything's got to be about the gigabytes now. But um, this was simpler times. You just take the game, you pop it in, Turn it on, you have the game. Uh, none of this fucking sit there and wait for it to load. None of this uh, DLC bullshit. None of this, uh, if you pre-order now, you'll get this skin. That does absolutely nothing. You know, it, none of that. You know, if you pre-order, most of the time, you got a game with the, like, the console. And even when you didn't, you brought the console and you got a game with it. I think they still do that, right? It's just super expensive now. Everything's expensive now. But here is uh, 
little tiny Chris. Little just wee Chris. He, when you really look at him, he really didn't, he hasn't changed much. Um, I think I saw some Game Boy games up there on the wall when she was uh, taking stuff off there. Yeah, I got some Game Boy games there, it looks like. What is that, fucking Game Gear up there? God. God, the thing. That's crazy. All right, next one. Chris Chan and Poke News. Well, if you have... So, this was back when, obviously, Pokemon came out. It was sweeping the nation. Uh, the Pokemon craze. And here, we actually hear a woman not say Pokemon. I hate, I, even now, I still hate when people say Pokemon. I mean, you hear it enough times, you see it on TV, you would think the adults who hear it would just say Pokemon. But no, they're like, Pokemon. No, it's not fucking Pokemon. This, stop it. Get some help. So this is P Chris Chan in Pokenews. Um, I've watched it. I mean, it, it's just a little clip, and there's, like, him playing. Um, nothing major, but the fact is, he's still in it. Like, what are the odds that this guy is recorded on on the news for fucking... Well, Crick Tucker was intentional, but three fucking times before that. It's just... The stars are line up for this dude. Grade schoolers in the house, they'll probably be interested in this next report. Now, if you don't, you can learn about a craze that's been sweeping the nation. NBC 12 reporter Jim Babb marched into the marketing breach today to bring us this story of Pokemon. I'll trade you the uh, holographic for a Japanese holographic. Cool. 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 You've got hundreds of these cards. I got, yes, yeah, some. Yeah, and I've got a lot more at home. <laughs> so tell me, why do you like Pokemon? I don't know. <laughs> You're not sure why you like it, but you do, right? Yeah. Like so many other fads, it got started with a kid's TV show. And now Pokemon is a marketing phenomenon. Kids and parents line up every Saturday at this Chesterfield County bookstore, and they dig deep. How much did all this cost? $30 with a discount. Then the games begin with Byzantine rules. How do you play the game? Uh, I can't explain it. It's too long. I'll switch. I'll put out my dragon there, even though it has 60 damage on it. Oh, boy. And I have three energy on it. Slam attack. So if you had the time to tell me, I wouldn't understand it. No. <laughs> um, I'm watching, and, and uh, I still have no clue. <laughs> And think about this. This kind of thing is happening in bookstores and toy stores all around the country. If you hadn't known it before, know it now. Pokemon is big. The biggest trend in kids' toy history, it's multi, multi-billion dollars. Money. Big time money. You wish you'd invested. So, so they show Chris, and uh, this kid's got his... Booster packs, there is nothing better than opening a fucking booster pack. Um, got the... He has his binder. I uh, still got my binder. I mean, I've opened up plenty of Pokemon cards on this channel, so... But I've still got my fucking binder. The, all, like, the, the original 150, like, the, the booster, the original booster. Um, a lot of cool cards. Uh, you know, the famed original Charizard. Um, but yeah, I've got all mine in the same binder it's been in since we started collecting. So that's binder seen better days. And, um, but this kid, this is why people were thinking that it's like subliminal stuff in like the, you know, the, the commercials or anything like that. Cause it's like, oh, I like it. I don't know why I like it. I was just told to like it. No, because it's fun. It's fun to collect things. It's fun to to give yourself uh, something to work towards. You know, you know. And like even now, you have like people like Leonhart um, who work towards the master set, which is having every single part of that set. And it's not easy. It's really not. 
Um, even just back in the day with the original 150, you know, you could have every card, but then that Charizard card, it just eludes you every single fucking time. It just kept giving you something to work towards. Yeah, it was your parents' money that there was it was being spent, but it, it's still a hobby. It gives you something to work towards. Uh, the games were, even now, they're still fun. Um, and it's nice to see them shaking things up, you know, combining Breath of the Wild with, like, Legends Arceus and, you know, making Scarlet and Violet like that. Um, but the show is entertaining. I mean, if this kid's like, oh, yeah, I like Pokemon. Why do you like it? I don't know. This is why people thought kids were being programmed subliminally to, to like it. Because kids like this, I don't know why I like it, I just like it. It was fun. It was just fun. Um. Ah, <laughs> uh, the jungle set. Some of the... Back, well, I'm not going to say some of the best cards, but some of the cards in there are some of the most beautiful. Um, even now. But yeah, some of, of amazing cards, along with um, Fossil. Uh, and some of the rarest, like... Um, Jolteon, uh, holographic Jolteon is worth quite a bit. Um, <sighs> just even now, it's just it's like 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 I said with Leonhart, he opens these packs like all the time. It's one thing seeing him open those packs, but to see it in this quality, like back in the day, and then pulls. If I could go back to the 90s, I would. Although, I'd still be poor as fuck, because it's not like I have a whole lot of crap load of money to bring with me. But, um... God. And then we have the game. It's not that complicated. I don't know why the kid's making it seem like it's that fucking hard. It's not. It's really not. I still play the game. Um... I've shown this before, but, uh... Got my, uh, uh, Pokemon trading card game right here. I still play a lot. Um, I don't play as much as I used to, but I still, I still play a lot. It's fun. Uh, it's fun battling people. <laughs> but here we have Chris as like an Ash Sonichu kind of mix. Um, The kid's like, yep, even if I explain it to you, you won't get it. Uh, it's not that hard, kid. The parents just don't understand. And that guy's like, yeah, I'm watching and I don't understand. It's not hard to get. If anything, Yu-Gi-Oh! is more complicated. Magic the Gathering is more fucking complicated. This is simple. You put energy on the Pokemon, you, you know, and then, you know, little things on the side, that little... You know, elemental-looking things? Yeah, that's how many energies you need. And then you just use the attack. If it has an effect, that effect happens. Like, it says flip a coin three times. This attack does whatever times the number of heads. It's not that complicated. You have trainer cards where you can heal your Pokemon or, or switch your Pokemon or, you know, look through your deck for a Pokemon you... It's not, it's not rocket science, my guy. Um... But anything that involves Pokemon, just total nostalgia trip. Um, now this one we've seen, but since it is part of the news uh, thing that we're doing right now, I uh, figured I'd show it again. So this is the memorial that uh, memorial service for Pulse nightclub victims in Charlottesville. So uh, Chris was there, of course. And uh, here we go. The University of Virginia community is also honoring the victims of that mass shooting from one year ago. New tonight, the student body at UVA hosted a memorial service to honor the 49 victims who lost their lives at the nightclub in Orlando, Florida. This all unfolded on the steps of the rotunda along University Avenue. The two-hour-long event included an opportunity for people to create art and share their tributes. Do not hate. Hate is not so good. And to be paranoid is a, is a bust. Feel the love that comes from us and try to feel love that you can offer, at least from within yourselves, for yourselves. 
People also read the names of those killed out loud during the ceremony. The event helped to promote equality and diversity. To create our Basically, he's like, don't be mean. Especially don't be mean to me. Uh, and uh, it's again with this, the whole, you know, he's doing this part of the whole activism, but it's like not too long before this, he was bashing on trans people. He was bashing on gay people. He bashed on people with autism, despite the fact that he's autistic. You know, he's sitting around here, look, probably looking at all these freaking uh, females, and he's like, I'm going to be rolling in the pussy tonight when that's not even remotely close to what would actually happen. He's thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to meet some girlfriend, uh, boyfriend-free gal here, and, uh, you know, they're going to come home, and I'm going to get my noodle wet, and uh, it, it doesn't happen. But yet he's so far into this whole... Uh, uh, facade of being trans, like, well, it's too late to turn back now. Um, you know, he's looking over this way, even this girl. He's like, I wonder if she's a boyfriend free gal. Maybe I should ask her for a number. But, um, you know, these two talking, and, um, Yeah, that's really the only reason he became trans in the first place. You know, these two, the only reason was for girls because they're like, oh yeah, Chris, if you if you become trans, you know, you'll you'll get the girls. You know, you can say you're a lesbian or this or that. So he did it just for that. But like I said, he he got to the point where it's like, okay, I'm so far, you know, deep into this, can't turn back now. I can't just say, oh yeah, I'm not trans anymore because of this. You know, it's like, I have to keep going with it. So. This Chris is the fucking idiot. Um, now, here's the Tucker Carlson one. I'll just bring up this one. Women. Now, Tucker being some old dude. I mean, he's not old, but he kind of refers to Chris Chan as in like Chan being his last name or something. Um, I don't I can't remember if he says Chris's full name. But, um, yeah, this will forever be the moment where Tucker Carlson talked about Chris. So, without further ado. A YouTube personality called Chris Chan has just been arrested in Virginia on, of all things, incest charges. Authorities say Chan was having sex with his 79-year-old mother who has dementia. Chris Chan is a biological man, but he identifies as a woman. Reportedly, Virginia authorities initially went along with that. They classified Chris Chan as a female. And that means Chris Chan, who is an accused sex criminal, would have been housed in a women's jail. We understand that decision has been reversed, likely due to public pressure. It became public, unfortunately, for the state of Virginia. And Chan is now being considered a man by the jail. But this is not an isolated incident. Many prisons in this country do house biological men with women. This is something we predicted, many predicted, and were laughed at. Kara Dansky is one of the people who predicted this. She's the president of the U.S. chapter of the Women's Human Rights Campaign, and she joins us tonight. Kara, thanks so much for coming on. I remember... So then they just go on talking about, um, with, uh, you know, men being in women's and circumstantial this and that but um yeah you can hear him talk and, and and he says chris chan as like chance his last name he doesn't say oh yeah christian weston chandler or even christine weston chandler but tucker isn't i mean we all know he's not that fucking kind of um pandering kind of person he's going to refer to chris as his biological name you know his biological gender is his birth name um so he's going to say Christian or Chris but um yeah he was on Fox News and uh I don't think any of the other big mainstream media outlets talked about it huh but um 
Yeah, Tucker Carlson is now part of Christory. And also, I guess people like me and and um, Smokey and because during this we were even announcing our uh, concerns with uh, like, hey, why is he going to a, possibly going to a women's prison or a women's jail or? So anyone who made videos about it and those got around and I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, the YouTubers alone, because there are people who are actually probably calling people up like, hey, uh, yeah, this dude's not really fucking trans. <laughs> He's not really trans. Just don't buy into his bullshit. But we're all part of Christory right now. If we've made a video about him, if we've if you've commented uh about him in these videos you're all part of it we're all in this together we all if one of us goes down we all go down no one's getting off the ship until i say they're getting off this ship i'm kidding no this ship is pretty much sinking fast uh youtubers know it uh, i'm sure there's i mean hell i see someone like fucking gibby finally catching up with the rest of us uh, let's see. I think I can just leave it at this. Um, no. Which one was it? I can't remember. It was, he no. Uh, what's it? This one? This one? No. Well, if you have grades. No, one of them in the news. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Three months. Yeah, well, Gibby just, like, did a, um, one, yeah, like, six days ago for the, the prayer. It's like, well, Gibbs, nice that you're, uh, finally caught up with the class here. What's he been saying lately? Let's see. Worst poem ever. Come on, man. But, uh, yeah, let's actually end up. Uh, my Pokemons, let me show them to you. But Chris has been in the news four times. I could live five lifetimes and still not be in the fucking news. You, all of us, could live five lifetimes and still not be in the news. And yet somehow this dude has managed to get in the news four fucking times. And this is why he is the most documented person on the internet. Because everything just always seems to line up. So. But yeah, this was a video. I, I, I really, <laughs> tomorrow's going to be even harder. I think Saturday, uh, yeah, yeah, tomorrow will definitely be harder, and then Sunday will be like a wrap-up, you know, just kind of talking about the week and, you know, maybe some extra Chris stuff, but um, it'll just be kind of like a closer to it, and um, tomorrow, geez, what am I going to do? I don't even know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I don't know. Any guy, if you guys have any... Uh, ideas i mean because we've let's see content okay so we've done we've read about the chris demonic possession chris chain creepypasta uh random chris videos the chris movie Um, so we've done a few different things. Yeah, your first time being exposed to Chris was day one. So day one, time you were exposed to Chris. Day two, Chris Chan movie. Day three, some random Chris videos. Day four, Chris Chan creepypasta. Day five, Chris Chan's uh, demonic possession. And then today's day six with 
Chris Chan being in the news. So if you guys have an idea for tomorrow, by all means, let me know. Because uh, this brain ain't so great at thinking anymore. It must be from all the years in the South. <laughs> we all, we're all sister fuckers here. I mean, apparently that's what people think. That apparently once you move to the South, you just become one of them. Now I'm, I'm still from the North, huh? I'm walking here. No, uh, well, I mean, I, I could start talking with an accent if I wanted to, but I really don't feel like that. Well, how y'all doing today? It's very nasally here. You know, a lot of the people very nasally. Hi, y'all. Um. <laughs> well, I want you to butter my biscuits. It's like, what? The biscuits, I want you to butter them so they get nice and brown on top. When they get put in the oven. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so if you guys have any ideas, let me know. That would be great. That would be great. That would be huge. Wonderful, you guys. I love you very much. You're all wonderful. Uh, anyways, you guys know the drill. I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.